when you look now here at the factors which influence price. And this was a slide we used in the last set of slides, and it's basically we're looking at the factors affecting price decisions. So we're looking here about channel member expectations, perception, competition, legal issues, all these things here. One question we're asking here is how sensitive are customers to changes in price? So, for example, would you notice if the price of a product had increased or decreased from the last time you purchased it? Would it affect your purchasing uh, behaviour? Would you shop around? You know, like salt. Do you know how much salt is? If you do go and buy salt, and they, they said it's one pound or fifty pence or three pounds, would you know any different here? Whereas maybe petrol, you are aware of the price of petrol. And you might shop around, you might be a petrol station, you think, oh, I'm not going there because it's too expensive. It's maybe two, three pence a litre. So ironically, when we get into petrol stations, you might go there because it's cheaper petrol. But the pro price of the products inside, maybe bread, milk, etc., is more expensive because the margins that they make in the petrol is not as high, but they make it up in the things they sell. But, you know, that's something people shop around for. Said that in Glasgow and Lanarkshire, people are very sensitive to the price of alcohol, certain off-sales, People would actually go to different off sales or pubs because the vodka, the, the tennis lager, is <coughs> pardon me, more is it cheaper elsewhere. So you know that's what you have to be, you may be up against. Or it could be for something like champagne. Maybe if you're buying champagne regularly, you don't care about the price. So if you they say if you have to ask about the price, you can't afford it. So maybe they they won't shop around if you said it's a hundred, two hundred pounds. They buy it because they're wealthy. You know. So these are the things about. Firms are always asking, how sensitive are customers to changes in price? Will they notice? Will they shop around? And of course, the old supply and demand curves from economics, which you all know a lot about. But you know, so basically, you know, the higher the price, more is supplied. The uh, the lower the price, more is demanded, and when we meet equilibrium in there. And of course, economics, you know, marketing developed from economics here, so it's a key point in this topic. And of course, the examples here with inelastic demand, meaning that the the price changes either up or down, but con consumers don't respond too much to it. So, you know, price of electricity might fall, but, you know, you don't then turn a, a lot of lights on around the house because you want to get good value for money. Uh, equally, you know, the price might increase, so you may become aware of the increased cost, but you still need a certain amount of light and, and heating, etc. So the demand would fall by only a certain amount. Of course, for elastic demand, which is what a lot of firms are mainly in this market, whereby if it changes, if the price goes uh, up, consumer response decreases um, more than that original amount. So we've got an example here, cinema tickets, which have actually increased quite a lot over the years. Um, but it's probably more, actually, I would argue, cinema tickets is more related to the movie. You know, whether it was a Harry Potter movie or a Die Hard movie or, or whatever it is you're into, you would go and see it maybe regardless. Although, of course, there comes a point when you would, hit the old uh, pirate DVDs or pirate streaming areas. So think about yourself, basically for the whole, whole idea of sensitivity to price, what products are you aware of? And what products would you think, oh, that's too dear, and you shop around, right? So these are the things, that's a market firms would be very concerned about your behavior there. This example here, actually it should be Cleveland, is it Cleveland Browns or the, the Cleveland, is it S apostrophe? Anyway, never mind that. So, right, Cleveland Browns, they reduced it, they had a terrible season. They had played, I think, 50, 14 games and lost every single one of them. So for the last game, they put the price down to $1. And this was a tweet that said, look, it didn't help. I don't know if that was taken before the game, just as the game starting, but it doesn't look to be a busy stadium. Um, now, I would argue that they didn't reduce the price for supply and demand. I don't think they reduced the price 
to increase the uh, capacity of people going. I think they were just surprised to apologise to the fans to say, look, we know it's terrible, so here's getting you the next game for one dollar. Um, and of course, these diehard fans would have turned up regardless whether it was one dollar or you know I don't know how much an American football game is, twenty, thirty dollars here. Um, and it didn't help. And it also, I think they lost as well. So but the sport, is, of course, is a different. The price um, aspect for sports fans can be a bit different. For example, when Andy Murray was in the Wimbledon final, you know, prices, people would have paid a fortune because it didn't matter as much then. So sometimes sports fans are a bit illogical when it comes to these issues. When we're looking at factors influencing price, obviously you've got to look at the competition. It, it goes without saying. And of course, the supermarkets, you know, um, lost share to Aldi and Lidl. Um, when they're so, it, it goes without saying that you look at the competition here. Um, although, of course, sometimes the competition is irrelevant. For example, you know, Man United. What Man United charge for a game or Manchester City? You know, Manchester City fans are not going to go to United and vice versa. So although the competition is not done that way, but most part it's a competition that drives it forward. And this is a, uh, if you log on to the Harvard Business Organization, how to fight a price war. So of course you register for these things um, and we'll use this for the um, activity on the Google site. You also have to think about the stage of the product life cycle. If you remember, we talked about introductory growth, maturity, decline. And of course, it's really in the growth stage here. That's where you make most profits because people want your product. When you get to maturity, well, quite often there's price competition, right? And so your profit margins are falling a bit. And of course, in decline, people, you know, you may find that an area of the market where they'll buy the product regardless. But, you know, it's, a, it's a, something you have to consider here. So these are factors. Look at the competition. Look at the product life cycle. Other issues here, you know, it's about the economy, it's about inflation, exchange rates. You've done economics, so you know in terms of inflation, how you know prices are rising, people are sensitive to it, etc. If high unemployment, so the economy is a key thing here. But we also have political issues, um, because the government, for example, minimum pricing for alcohol, which came in the sugar tax, has affected how these firms um, price their products. And in fact, in some cases, they've They've taken out the sugar to keep it below certain levels here. The one here about the Harry Potter book is because books used to be, the prices used to be controlled. Um, whereas we had, we used to have uh, recommended pricing for books, it was a, the publisher would set the price. And the reason was that bookshops um, would say, look, yeah, we need to be able to sell the Harry Potter's books so this world to make money uh, because we don't make money in the medical books and the law books and the other important books. But that went out the window maybe about 20 years ago, and that's why supermarkets started selling books. And they don't want a big range of books, they'll just focus on the key ones here. Um, so, and there's a, a link there to the, the, how Brexit is meant to increase prices. We don't know, it could lead to increased prices, but this is something that um, we will find out in the next maybe five, 10 years how that impacts, how political issues, economic issues impact upon pricing. OTC, by the way, over-the-counter medicines. Again, once the price was controlled and fixed, it's now gone. So sometimes government regulation, people want the government to step in and control gas and electricity, certain things, because it can't be left to the market. And of course here, we're looking at pricing objectives, firm set objectives, and sometimes the number one objective, which I've put it in, in what you did, survival. Because most businesses, most of a lot of retailers go out of business in January, February, because they've come through Christmas and they've not survived. But when they're pricing, they're not caring about long-term objective. They just want to get money, which gets them to the next month and month after that. So survival. Sometimes you prevent new entry. You don't want people coming into the, the business, so you keep prices low. Remember that supply and demand curve? So the high prices attracts high prices, high profits. You keep your prices low, um, profits are low, people think it's not worth the trouble here. 
You may want to be regarded as fair, which I'll come to in a second. Cash flow and the money flowing in match the competition. You know, this is where you say, I think Tesco got a thing of matching Aldi. So you match a competition, um, you mean, or you want to maintain or improve market share. You've got a return on investment, which is a key thing here because firms will say, look, for any product we launch, we want 10% return on investment. Otherwise, we could have stuck that money in the bank and it's less risk here. One about Marlborough was basically a story how Marlborough and who were under competition in America from Winston Cigarettes who were chipping away at the market share with very aggressive pricing tactics. But Marlborough ho held until basically Winston were going to launch a share issue to raise money to go to the stock market to fund various things. And on the day that they announced this, Marlborough drastically reduced their prices. I think that this is a very complicated story, but basically reduced their prices. The market knew, oh, it's a price war, profits will be cut. So the share price was it was null and void. Winston had to withdraw the, the offer or reduce the price of the share, make less money, because the firm knew price wars are not good for firms. It's not good for profits, and the markets don't like them, okay? So, of course, you can't have collusion. That's illegal. But price wars, you know, not in, in counter at all. This one here, uh, fair, so the, the sky-high price of cash, when you look at these figures here for borrowing money now, 247 money box, 5,784 APR, right? Which is almost, it's criminal. But in, I think Wonga are in there, they're now out of business. So there's a lot of firms. Is that fair? Is it fair that they can charge such high, sky-high prices for people who can't afford credit? This is the point about fair pricing to return to it. It's just to say how what is fair, it comes in in different things. The World Health Organization, fair pricing in medicine, and actually this is a forum on it. This link here could work if you go to it, um, but it's, it's showing you how the, the, the drug companies will say, well, we, you know, uh, we have to make money for developing new products, as they do, but the World Health Organization think there's a lot of them um, unfair elements in here that they could be better at it, that prices of drugs uh, could be cheaper and for poorer countries. So you know that just shows you how they're, they're looking at fair pricing. Um, the Borussia Dortmund fans complained about pricing because they played, I think, Arsenal in a Champions League game. Anytime they come to the UK, in Germany, a price of a ticket is, say, around 10 euros. They come to England and it's like 50 pounds, right? And they're saying that's unfair because, you know, different ethos about how they treat the fans in, in different countries. The Financial Conduct Authority, um, who is, is industry controlled, but they look at fair pricing in financial services, right? So they're even looking at how maybe the Wongas of this world, the cheap credit. And this one here, the picture of the milk, which you can't see is, um, if you go into, I think it was in Morrison's, and they've got milk there, and milk is, let's say, £1.10 for a you know a standard whatever litre it is. But they say, look, here's other milk, which is we pay a fairer price for the, the um, farmer, and it's maybe one pound thirty, and they're leaving up to you to make the choice. They're saying, look, you give this price, which is implying that they've ripped off the farmers, or here's something that's a bit more um, pricier. So the and it, leaving leaving up to you to decide this. So pricing, in a lot of cases, it's not fair. Okay, this side here is just saying, look, see your choice of the marketing mix. That's going to affect your price. You know, like new product development. If you develop 10 new products and they all fail, that's got to be reflected in the price somewhere. You know, remember the decay curve? You know, one successful product pays for the 59 failures or, you know, ideas before that. So what about your advertising? What about your distribution channels? All these things that you put in, if you make a decision to make something better and it increases the cost, then that's got to be reflected in the price. Um, the example here, I think uh, Kevin Bacon was paid something like eight million pounds um, by, who was it, EE? Uh, and so that eight million, before you even make a single sale, has to be recovered. And the, the singer there was uh, was um, Bay Once, I believe her name is. So Bay Once, is that how you say it? Yeah, I think it is. Bay Once, uh, Beyonce. 
50, she was paid 50 million dollars by Pepsi. Now, so you imagine it, before they sell a single can, how many cans more do you have to sell to generate 50 million dollars? No surprise, it didn't work, right? So uh, it wasn't a great success. So sometimes, but you've made the decision and that has to be reflected in the price. So always remember that. Okay, we're looking at factors influencing price. So, and it's a bias perception. So how, what is the customer's view of your price? Okay, remember perception from consumer behavior doesn't have to be real it's how you perceive it so you might have say oh that waitress that's very expensive Harrods that's very expensive house of Fraser a Rolls Royce view perception so is it fair is it a rip-off is it competitive you know some firms get a reputation for certain things so this is what you've got to look at how do they perceive you in the first place now we have an internal re reference price whereby in your head you're thinking is that right that sounds about right so if you go for milk or bread or birth, anything and you think yeah that seems okay so you know in your head from your experience what is right and you know you might walk away saying no that that's too expensive or you might have an external reference price go compare right price comparison sites you go on and you think wait a minute you know am i getting value for money here and of course these have grown in recent years price is more visible so we can see what people are paying now we've got here value conscious and price conscious which are two different things because value conscious is price is purely about the money you look and think well that's 10 pounds but someone may say yeah that's 10 pounds but i'll get better value i remember reading about some lawyer who paid like five six hundred pounds for a pair of shoes and he said yeah but they'll last a lifetime and you start with well you know i think a roughly a lifetime but let's not let's assume style is not an issue but maybe if you pace it over 10 years 20 years that becomes more value Right? But, you know, that's why we all go, we still go to pre well, you might go, I don't know, but you go to pre and you might buy something for the summer, yeah, and a few pounds, and maybe the end disposable fashion, throw it away. And so you get the idea of value conscious, price conscious, two different things. Price is just a number. And prestige sensitive is when you care about the name, the brand name on it, and that's why you will pay extra, because you want to see and reassure everyone that this is value for money. This is something that we'll deal with later in distribution but of course what you have here is this um remember here's let's say there's a wee product here let's call it a wee square box thing so you make this so you've got to buy in raw materials maybe you've got to undertook research and development you've got to make it the labor the electricity all the costs here then you've got to sell it in distribution promotion so you sell it and it goes to the manufacturer so let's say here um you say you're selling you you begin with £10 and you sell it to the manufacturer for, say, £15. So that's so that's what it's cost you, maybe. So you're making about £5 per product. So then the manufacturer, the, so the retailer, they've got buying costs, they've got overheads, they've got hold stock, they've got selling and distribution, they've got promotion, and then they sell it, you know, to you. And it might be, this time, £20. Now, of course... You, you, what happens is back here, these guys here, as soon as they bring out the product, they're, they're not thinking how much money they make. They've got to think, how much will this cost on the shelf? Okay, so they'll work backwards and think, okay, right, on the shelf, if this was to appear on the shelf, it'd probably be maybe £25. So if, if it's going to sell for £25, they'd maybe need to buy, but you know, you work back the way here. And in some cases, as we'll see with distribution, there could be other people in there, agents, wholesalers, which complicates this further, okay? So you're always looking at other people have to make money and that has to be factored in. Now, this is a big area of pricing and it's one that books rarely agree on, but it's really, we're, so we're going to simplify here and it's three main approaches to setting prices. So we're essentially going to look at cost, competition and demand right so let's run through this now this links back to your accounts which i have no desire to revisit 
But the whole reason you're bought you're taught with all the fixed costs. So you have to know your fixed costs, regardless if you produce one or one million, they don't change. And the variable costs do change here. So within firms, knowing your fixed costs, looking at your variable costs, you know, total costs, and it's looking for break-even analysis. For firms have to say, how many do we have to sell to break even? And of course, accountants, how they treat figures, it can be complicated, but it's important to know this. So this is where marketing meets accounts. But if you remember at the beginning, we said, here's a problem. Marketing people can count. People have as a badge of honour, they'll say, oh, I can't do maths. Now, arithmetic isn't maths, but forgetting that. People don't say, oh, I don't, I'm not good at English and they're proud of it. You know, people, I'm not good at English. But people think, oh, yeah, I'm not good at maths. And this is an issue, but numeracy, you have to be good with numbers for marketing. Everybody thinks marketing is all about advertising and imagination, and that's important, but the numbers are very important as well. Now, if we look here at costs, um, just bring up here, you start, this is a simple one. So start with the cost per product, you add a percentage to cover the costs, and make, you know, that makes sense, right? So you say it's 20 pounds, 20%, mark up here selling price 12 pounds boom there you go so it's fair it's simple no one would grudge you your money there and it ensures your costs are covered so you can't argue with that or can you <laughs> well first of all how do you come up with costs there's how they treat them depreciation variable marginal fixed allocation of overheads you know in the university we'll say you know, we can't run a class without some like a course without 15 students but really all the time and what about sometimes you have to make a loss and a, something to get it kick-started? And if you look at farm manufacturing cars, you know, the robots, the, the factories, the materials that are coming from all over the world and the shipping, how can they seriously say, yes, this is exactly £8,155.47? You know, a lot of it's not guesswork, but it maybe could be subject to re-revision here. All-inclusive, I've always wondered how they price all-inclusive holidays with all the food that comes in and wasted, I should add there. And, you know, and also a favourite of mine is Unlimited for the Cine World card, whereby you can go, you can see 365 days a year, maybe you know more movies if you want. So, but you, the down, the other side is they get money from people who are, are men, who who pay out and not go. So they're paid maybe I think it's about 19 pounds a month. And they'll not go so this is a regular source of income so how do you price that how do you factor now the unlimited cart has increased price over the years i have one it's fantastic but this is a thing i'd love to look at the figures but would probably confuse me anyway because i'm not that new so cost we say actually i think i spoke too quickly there so i think you may have missed what i said i was about to say their cost yeah it's a good thing but it's complicated, so it's not that easy. This is one from, um, I think, Jamie's Italian restaurants, which is now shut down, but it's break even. And what they said there was um, each restaurant in the chain needed to attract 3,000 diners a week to be profitable, right? I think a lot of restaurants are closing just now. Um, so that is bottom line. That's just a break even. 3,000, you're counting them. If it's not happening, you're out of business. Of course, this is uh, determining the break-even point, which um, I presume you, you know about because you've studied accounts, um, but it looks good here. But it's all about the point whereby, the, say for Jamie's restaurants, when the 3,001 customer comes through the door, you've covered your cost, you're making money, right? So that's what organisations, a lot of them are looking at. What is the break-even point in sales when we start to cover our costs, stop losing money and start making money? What we have here is, right, so we've got costs. You look at your costs. That's important. You must know your costs, right? You must be in control of them. But you don't set the price purely on the costs. So you look at the competition. Now, the price charge per competition is the starting point, not the finishing point. doesn't mean you charge the same as them, okay? It just helps you. What are they charging? Oh, yeah, that's okay. 
So maybe like Manchester United, Manchester City, they might say, what are they charging? You know, just as an example, even though they're not in direct competition, just as a, what the market's going for. So, and it's realistic, because most firms are in competition with each other. You know, those petrol stations, the cheapest petrol in Glasgow, I think is Costco, but straight up opposite them is um, um, Tesco, big Tesco, this is in the Springburn area of Glasgow, and Tesco's price is they're more expensive than Costco, but they're cheaper than other Tesco's because they're saying, look, we can't have a six pence price, a six pence a litre price difference. Let's just try and narrow it as much as we can so that people go in and think, yeah, okay, because of course not everyone can go to Costco, um, but if you're in Costco, you can go to either Costco or uh, Tesco. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's realistic then. Now, what, you might charge the going rate, right? What's everybody happy with? We'll go with this, we'll not rock the boat, we're fine here. Or you could go for a premium price and say, no, we're going for the highest neg segment niche market. So we've got to charge more for this. Or you could go the other way around, a discount price, right? So if what you're saying is, yeah, there's the market leader, but we're going cheaper. And you walk in for various reasons. And I think actually when I was last in Costco, Pepsi is much cheaper than Coca-Cola, right? And significantly cheaper because obviously maybe Pepsi can charge, sorry, Coca-Cola can charge the premium price. That's what they can do. So you've got, you know, you think about hotels as well. Some of them think, yeah, we've got a lot of hotels here. We're, we're going for the higher price because we're giving you more value for you. You know, that's what you're expecting from us. So competition, you look at them. Again, you don't, they don't dictate your price, but you, you benchmark against them. You'll, so you look at your costs and the competition. Ultimately, it's the customer that determines demand. If you look at a, you know an auction, um, if you ever watch these vlog it programs or whatever, it's the customer. Sometimes they think, well, I think this is worth such and such. The customer decides. Um, so in this case, you say you look at your costs. That's important. You look at the competition. What will the customer pay? And of course, you look at your strategy here. You look at the value. You look at the distribution. So you're taking a bigger picture here on price. course within demand you know high demand high prices um, and that's how like, Ryanair operates in the, the airlines because the airlines will say well if you want to go to you know, Mallorca in the high season on a Saturday night and you know, you'll char pay more than going in a you know Wednesday 3am in the morning to you know in, in November that that's what happens so they'll change their price because it will reflect demand um, that's what they do um, so what you have is differential pricing now comes in here. So we're looking at how different price for who you are, for the, where you consume the product, the time. I think I took, did that slide transition too quickly there. So just to remind you that what happens is this, you discriminate by price, on price, pay, place, person and time. So for example, here's a theatre and it's a Book of Mormon, which is very funny, very rude. Um, so this in London, and it's essentially a look at the seat prices. So there's the the, the premium prices, the best view, the red, or if you're colourblind, that's green. But the, there's the there's the premium prices in there, and then you look at just maybe one row behind or one seat, you've now got the a great view. So someone just looking down here, at some point someone has to sit and decide. No, that's that's a gone from a premium view to a great view and the price will re 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 um, change accordingly so of course that's the you know the stalls you've got the circle the upper circle the balconies etc the grand circle so there may be something like five six different prices within there that you could go for um, by person it could be because um, older people children who wouldn't be seen the Book of Mormon um, it could be if you're you're deaf or blind or something like that, you know, disabled, a different price then. It could be for groups, etc. And of course, during the day, matinee performance is cheaper in the evening. So you change the price depending on the same thing happens at cinema, other organisations. You know, and even looking here at a, a sports stadium where they have the season tickets, of course, people 
putting in these season tickets, they're putting in the money in advance before they've ever seen, before a ball is thrown or a ball is kicked or whatever, they've paid up the money up front. Um, and of course, within this distance, again, combination of different areas where you sit in this one. Don't know if you can see it in the right here, this is the Chelsea one, um, and it's got prices, and it's, if I remember, yeah, it's got age, and it's got restricted view, and it's all these common price, combination of prices. So, you know, you could have, you know, within a stadium watching a game, 10, 20 different pricing points within there, and someone has to decide what's a child pay, what does an OAP pay, what someone sits further back here, restricted view, all these things here because pricing, you know, it's about the customer, what the customer will pay. Just a few examples here, this is one when you go to book a something on a hotel, and look at this, you know, so an early booking rate cannot be cancelled, you know, um, bed and breakfast rate cannot be cancelled or cancelled free of charge. So there's different prices, but you, so you, you pay this price, but if you cancel, that's your problem. So a variety here. This one I liked, it's in Mark Square in Venice, and it was saying about um, how you can be charged more for sitting outside. And there was someone who was charged £38 for two coffees and two bottles of water because he chose to sit at a table outside. Um, and they charge more for this, so um, that's a bit of a rip off here anyway. And my favourite here, sensitive to this one, as far as I remember, this is John Lewis in Glasgow, and it's how £1.95 for a can of Iron Brew. Now I'm sitting thinking, I can get eight cans for that in Tesco, of course. If I had to bring in eight cans from Tesco and sit in John Lewis, they would throw me out. But I would look and think, no, I'm not buying that in a point of principle, because I'm mean. There, truth is out. one here this is just really about who you are how price changes I threw this into you know search for prices it's for a loan etc so this is how it can back up and they're putting different figures and how um how here's the Sainsbury Bank one um and look at this five percent APR you know and it's 179 pound per month it's the, the money we won here um if you borrow four thousand same amount here that was borrowing over two years 14.9% APR, and look at the Tesco one here, 71.2% APR. All I did there was change what my income was, and I changed it, and it's, so it was coming back saying basically, the poorer you are, the more expensive it is to um, borrow money here. So it's actually, to be wealthy, it's, it's obviously easier than life, but it's actually cheaper to be wealthy than it is to be poor. So look at these differences, of course you're rich, you're not borrowing that amount of money, but this is why, it's who the person is here. And of course, um, pricing by height, you know, and how buffets, you know, um, it's actually quite fortunate. I happened to take the cast of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs out to lunch and save myself a lot of money. Um, but here, <laughs> can you imagine getting kids, you know, crouched down, etc. But by height here, this one's not by height, obviously, on the right-hand side, but it's just about but location. How if you're in the worst place to buy currency um, to go, is in an airport. You never buy currency in an airport because they know you've got nowhere else to go. They know that if you're in the airport and you've not got your currency yet, that's why you would get such a high, you know, you get not ripped off, yeah, probably ripped off, but you never buy it in an airport because you don't get value for money. But some people... They have to. They're going to arrive in a country. And they need money. This one came up last year, and it was really quite uh, astounding. It was a festival. Um, it was for it was to celebrate Black culture, etc. After Future, and so it was charging double price for people, non people of colour. So in other words, say no one. You know, you could have, how you, remember in framing it, how you frame the price, you could have said, um, oh, you, you pay more for credit card. You know, I don't think they would have got away with saying, oh, if you're, you know, um, if you're um, African descent, we'll, we'll put, you'll pay less, etc. But they changed the policy on this. So you could see maybe what they were getting at here, but they, they stopped it pretty soon.
course in pricing you know it's really you have a basic price but you pay for extra so these are things like how the um, EasyJet and Ryanair you know look at this so credit card fees extra leg room front seat standard board you know airport check-in infant fee all these things here how they make their money and they're saying yeah, if you want to fly that's fine but if you want to check in a bag if you want to have many music management golf clubs more and more and more they add on here so you have an extra basic price that you build upon some things here you know pricing tactics you know, meant to be like odd even pricing or meant to like odd prices rather than even prices you know the 989 pounds or even as far as we prefer 37 pence to 38 pence so there's a lot of research could be done in here but the idea is odd even pricing marks and spencer's changed their clothes over to round them up they didn't have any difference here but some people liked the psychological thing here then it could be late payment fees extra charges you know surcharges that's why blockbuster didn't go into business with netflix because they like the money they earn from this sort of thing here and price promotions which is price promotions really ties in with the um promotional side of things so between two of them here but that's you know we all like the bargains here the yellow label stuff Lining is a, a good topic here, and this is basically what's the pre uh, premise that we can't cope with too many prices, right? We don't like it, our brain can't cope. So, for example, if you go into um, spec savers, they'll say, right, yeah, there's you know, there's specs 45 pounds or 25, 45, 69, 85, boom, 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 three levels. In fact, within here, we've got good, better, and best. I think this is for hearing aids. I said, I think this is for hearing it, I forget it, but you hear what they're saying is, look. We're bringing it down so that you know, yeah, that's the best there. There's the highest price, but it's broken down here. And if there's ones for phones, you know, bundles here like this. And the idea about this, if you imagine being TK Maxx, TK Maxx, you see, and you go search for it. They don't care about price lining. They just, you, you, you know, that if you go in there, you'll find a bargain, but it takes a while. Most places we just go in and think, right, here's shoes, you know, 30 pounds, 70 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever, it breaks it down into good, better, best, etc. Right, that's price lining. So look for examples when you see that around you. And of course, price bundling. Again, there's another Harvard Business Organization one. So if you go on the site, you can find this one. But it's the pros and cons of price bundling, okay? Um, you know, a Happy Meal is a price bundling, where it's by, you know, it's not just the, the burger, the chips, um, and the drink, you know, it's cheaper to get them all at once. It's good, it helps them move the stock out um, rather than just buy two. So it's increasing the consumption. Anyone who's ever gone through the Sky packages where they think, oh, for just an extra five pounds, I can get this, or look, and for another few pounds, before you know it, it's Sky High. <laughs> sky High, forget it. Um, but the thing is, that's price bundling. And of course, do you have your, like me, your broadband, your TV and your phone with the one company because it's cheaper that way, or so I'm told, okay? So price bundling, key thing in marketing. Of course, freemium, um, a, a standard tactic in, in marketing these days, you know, how many of you Spotify, whereby it's free, but if you wanted to use it, you know, away from Wi-Fi, etc., <clears throat> out, out, out and about you have to pay for it i think the game fortnite is the same a lot of these computer games here's one here from candy crush on the right hand side and it was to buy something 27.99 you know so the game's free but if you want to progress you have to pay more for it uh, and i've got this link i think on the site about freemium and different companies to do it here so again you lure people in uh, i actually said this to a student about the candy crush who would pay that this girl said her mother did Right? But sometimes it lures you in these games, you know, and get caught. And there's a lot of stories about kids running up parents' credit card accounts on this. And what we have here is, sh I can't say this word, honestly, shrinkflation. Sh sh anyway, yeah, 
So rather than increase the price, make the product smaller, right? So we see quality street there. These products here are meant to have decreased in size because they say, no, rather than put the price up, you know, as long as you don't affect the flavour, you just get used to it here. And that's why smaller um, packaging is, is the way around this. And there's a link to the story. Products that have been smaller since Brexit, but it's not just Brexit. Since sort of the financial crisis, you know, a decade ago. And even they bring in here pricing for business markets, you know, and this is, we always talk about consumers, but now you've got a trade discount for this. Um, buying in bulk here, paying by cash, could be seasonal, or an allowance, which is probably more important, but you're saying, well, if you do this, if you take part in promotions, you'll help us with this. So you can read that. So this is taking far too long. I can't believe it. Just too long. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is this. Price impacts upon revenue. Okay? We know that. But the other elements of market mix don't. You've got to have clear pricing objectives, right? Sit down, what are you trying to achieve? They've got to be integrated with other marketing and mixed variables, and it's always about value, right? Value is what drives it forwards. And what we should stress here, but what won't happen is it must be marketers that control the price, not accounted, but that's not going to happen. A recent, I'm pretty sure it was something like 40% or 50% of marketing people don't have any control over pricing. So, anyway, thanks for listening.